They've arrived here about an hour and a half before the police say that this encampment against the genocide in Gaza at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. has to be broken up. before the police say they're gonna come. You've already seen the University of Southern California earlier on Thursday and the University of Texas at Austin being broken up by the police. Also today at Princeton University in New Jersey, Chris Hedges was in the middle of reading a poem to the children of Gaza when campus police led him away. Chris sent us a text message with a tweet that had a film of him being let away, we're waiting for further updates, which you'll probably see by the time this is on the air. George Washington University, Washington, D.C., hundreds, hundreds of people sitting here, students. So far, the police are nowhere to be seen, but in driving over here, I did notice about seven Washington, D.C. police cars lined up half a mile from here, 10 blocks maybe. Don't know if that's related to this, but there is a staging area for police when they undertake operations like that, and that could well have been it. We'll come back. George Washington University in Washington, D.C. We're waiting for the police. They say they'll come at 7 p.m. to break this up. All right, we're here at George Washington University with Medea Benjamin of Code Pink, of course. Medea, today you probably heard that Chris Hedges was let off by the police, campus police in Princeton. He's reading a poem wow, for the children of, Prince, of, uh, Palace, of uh, Gaza, where he was many, many times. I was with Chris in London for Assange's trial, and he told me he can't sleep at night because he knows so many people in Gaza he'd been there, as the bureau chief for the New York Times. Of course, you know about uh, University of Southern California and Austin, Texas, and now we're here at George Watt. What the hell is going on right now? Well, what's happening is so exciting because young people are seeing that the older generations uh, are totally fine with genocide and they're happy to spend another $17 billion of our taxes uh, to arm the Israeli military while it's uh, starving and killing and maiming uh, thousands of people. And so young people are the ones that have the, uh, the moral center, they have the courage, they have the conviction. And they're the ones that are telling the rest of the country, no, this is not okay. I love the explosion of activism all over on the campuses. It gives great hope for the future, um, the future that must change U.S. policy. I can't believe that in this last vote, there were only 58 members out of, four, uh, uh, out of 435 members of Congress uh, that said no in the middle of a genocide to sending more money. And that sends a certain signal out to the rest of the world that the U.S. is morally bankrupt and corrupt and can't lead in anything. And then you see these encampments and you see the just a bubbling up of activism coming from the younger generation and you say, maybe there is hope for the U.S. after all. What about the tactic of police breaking these up? Isn't that just contributing to the growth of these protests? Absolutely. When you see what is happening and calling in state troopers and calling in police on uh, horseback and beating people up, even a Fox News journalist, um, that just makes people more determined. Just like when they tried to close down the Columbia encampment and it only grew. So I think they're using horrible tactics uh, that are not only immoral and uh, against the uh, students' free speech, but it's also backfiring. So you just returned from Istanbul where you were with the flotilla 
hoping to be able to go to Gaza to deliver aid. What happened? Well, so far, the boat hasn't been able to leave Istanbul. There's a lot of pressure on the Turkish government coming from the United States and Israel and Germany to not let the boats go. And more recently, there's pressure on Guinea-Bissau, that was the flagship country for the boats, um, to not allow the boats to fly under their flag. Um, you know, the long arm of the United States that uses carrots and sticks especially when countries like Turkey are facing inflation, economic problems that have uh, influenced the recent elections and disfavored the government of Erdogan. They're trying to use uh, that as a way to strong arm the government to say don't allow the boats to go. So we don't know in the end what's going to happen, but it looks like um, there's already been a delay of 10 days. People have come in from all over the world. There's people from 40 different countries. So it might you know, be a big turnover of who can go when, if indeed at some point the boats are going to be allowed to go. But unfortunately, it's not looking good at this moment. Right. Thank you very much, Medea. Yeah. Thank Medea you. Benjamin of Code Pink here at George Washington University. Thanks. A few patients got to go.
are here today to stand with the DMV SJP coalition and every SJP across this country that is organizing for the liberation of Palestine. We are here to tell these Zionist institutions, we are here to tell this Zionist president, we are here to tell our enemies of the world, the enemies of the people, that we are not going anywhere, that we will not back down, that we will stand here until liberation and return. Please give it up for a representative of the DMV, S. J.P. Coalition made up of students, students from George Washington University, Georgetown University, American University, George Mason University, UMBC, UMD, Gallaudet University, and Howard University, all, all uniting across the occupied Turtle Island to demand full liberation from Palestine. For over 200 days of the ongoing genocide in Gaza, we as students in the DMV have stood firm in our support for a free Palestine. From Australia to France, Palestine to the occupied Turtle Island, the students have mobilized in mass to demand that their universities divest from the horrific atrocities that have gone unchecked for far too long. These students, including all of us right here, have established liberated zones within their universities taking back the educational institutions that were once a place of radical change and revolution. We as students have a message for GW and every university in the DMV. We the students for the greater movement of Palestinian liberation demand institutional accountability. We will continue to reclaim our power on campus. There will be no classes or compliance with any institution so long as they shamelessly profit off of the genocide in Gaza. More than 40 schools across the country have started encampments standing in solidarity with Gaza and Palestinians who are being subjected to a brutal genocidal campaign. The Student Coalition for Palestine at GW and the DMV Students for Justice in Palestine Coalition have established this encampment with Gaza as our compass. Gaza as our compass. And we stand firm in our commitment to the Palestinian people of Gaza. In the face of the imperialist system of repression and silencing, we demand an end to the ongoing genocide, and we are steadfast in achieving our demands. Our demands are clear, and they are as follow. Each university must drop the charges against pro-Palestinian student organizers. Drop the charges! Each university must protect pro-Palestinian speech on campus. Each university must divest from companies selling technology and weapons to the Zionist regime. Each university must immediately disclose all endowments and investments. Each university must end all academic partnerships with the Zionist State of Israel. The students and the youth are at the heart of every movement. Our voices, our mobilization, and our power terrifies these universities and institutions. We will not stop until our universities divest and Palestine is free!
Revolution, fighting for the liberation of Palestine and the DMV. First and foremost, MD to Palestine stands in full support of the brave students occupying University Yard. As abolitionists, we recognize the importance of reclaiming public space from the state and powerful private institutions. Challenges to the Zionist entity scare the heads of powerful institutions because they understand that their institutions only derive power from the same world order that makes settler colonialism normal. That makes incarceration normal. That makes mass graves normal. That makes the torture of children normal. That makes the desecration of land and water normal as abolitionists. As abolitionists, we also share a vision of education where students are not merely trained to become obedient workers, but revolutionaries who stand up in the face of injustice. <laughs> to GW and all university employees, the working conditions in universities across the US have been rapidly declining for decades as neoliberalism becomes the law of the land. Shame! And it is not lost on us that this university that students are occupying is named for a powerful colonizer in a city that is also named for that colonizer. Just under a year ago, this same university tried to obscure its colonial legacy by changing the name of its mo mascot from colonials to revolutionaries. Yet here they are, trying to silence the revolutionaries that they claim to represent. The disgusting hypocrisy displayed by this university will not be tolerated or forgotten, and we will continue fighting for the freedom of oppressed Palestinians and oppressed peoples everywhere, as real revolutionaries would do. You should have kept your mascot. Our demands in this moment are principled and clear, and I will repeat them. Drop the charges against pro-Palestine organizers. Protect pro-Palestine speech on campus. Divest from companies selling technology and weapons to the Zionist regime. Immediately disclose all endowments and investments and end the academic partnerships with the Zionist regime of Israel. We demand these administrations address their blatant double standards. You stand there and silence Palestinian voices, oppress Palestinian students so other students can feel safe. Do we not deserve safety? Does the suffering of our families not matter? on this very campus being politically repressed by George Washington University. Shame! Shame! Just in the past week, Palestinians uncovered another mass grave at Nasser Hospital, holding over 200 mutilated corpses. At the same time, shame! At the same time, Netanyahu and Biden condemn nationwide mobilization from students justly demanding an end to the horrific genocide and that their universities divest from the Zionist killing machine. I cannot overstate how important, strategic, and courageous these nationwide student mobilizations are. Frederick Douglass, 
Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand. Every inch that is conceded by our enemies is solely because of our struggle, not their change of heart. We are engaged in an act of rebellion. This moment of struggle on GW's campus is a powerful thread in the worldwide struggle against Zionism and by extension, American imperialism. The student movement has always been at the forefront of anti-imperialist struggles and who has always been called as the first line of defense against them? The police! These crooked cops do absolutely nothing when there's a real emergency. But when it comes, when it comes to harassing students protesting genocide, then they gleefully come out and brutalize, harass, and arrest. And the university, shame. And the university, instead of protecting their students, actively chooses to let loose the police and repress their students. Shame! What do we do in the face of political repression? We stand up and we fight back! The DC Alliance is a united front of progressive grassroots organizations committed to fighting for community control of the police. Anak Bayan, PYM, and many other organizations are part of this united front. Every experienced organizer in this city will tell you that the primary oppositional force they face is the police. We aim to take power away from the police and put it back into the hands of the people! These cops should not be able to harass and brutalize us with impunity. You see, they're toe-to-toe -to -toe with these Zionists. They protect the Zionists, not us. As long as we, the oppressed and working masses of people, do not have control over them, they will act in the best interests of our enemies. When we talk about liberation, at the end of the day, we are talking about power. Right now, the Zionist, the racist, the capitalist have the power, which is dangerous to all the forces of progress seeking liberation. To quote Kwame Ture, if a white man wants to lynch me, that's his problem. If he's got the power to lynch me, that's my problem. Racism. Racism is not a question of attitude. It is a question of power. We mean to take power away from the Zionist, from the racist, from the capitalist, and put it back into the hands of working and oppressed people. We must connect the student movement with the movements for progress in this city. I urge every single one of you to join the United Front and to fight for our democratic right to self-determination. <laughs> to the students, I quote a famous anti-imperialist, the world is yours as well as ours, but in the last analysis, it is yours. You young people, full of vigor and vitality, are in the bloom of life like the sun at eight or nine in the morning. Our hope is placed on you. The world belongs to you! <laughs> Repeat after me. MPD, KKK, IOF, they're all the same! Clear!
hurra, full of steam! Hurra, hurra, full of steam! Hurra, hurra, full of steam! Oh, yes, indeed. Friends, my name is Sean Blackman, and I'm here with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Oh, yes. And you know, there once was a great historian and master teacher named Dr. John Henrik Clark. And Dr. Clark was fond of telling us that history is a current event. May 4th, 1970. The Ohio National Guard opened fire on protesting students at Kent State University, killing them, wounding them. And more than a week later, on May 15th, 1970, there was the Jackson State Massacre. And before them both, in 1968, there was the Orangeburg Massacre. Yeah. Now, what do all these attacks from the state, from the police, what do they have in common? All of them are directly connected to students protesting against U.S. imperialism and white supremacy. And because those young people, because those students stood up to the most powerful military machine on the earth, the full weight of the state was brought down on them. This is what we're seeing at Columbia University. This is what we're seeing at the University of Texas, at Austin. This is what we're seeing at campuses all across the country where encampments just like these are popping up, showing the bravery and the militancy of the students who refuse to stop the fight until Palestine is free. And what they also have in common is the role of the police. And where do the police come from in this country? The police as an institution in the United States emerges out of slavery. The police were literally organized to harass, brutalize, and kill black people and indigenous people. My friends, you must always remember that the police exist ultimately to protect capital and the capitalist ruling class. The police like to say that they're here to protect and serve. No, they're telling the truth. But what they're protecting is the property of the rich and what they're serving are their interests. They're not protecting and serving us. And it's well understood that Israel can only exist as an entity with the direct support of US imperialism. And once we understand that imperialism is the highest stage of capitalism and that the police as an institution exists to be in service to capital, it becomes clear that if we want to bring an end to police terror in all of its forms, and if we want to bring an end to imperialism, we will have to bring an end to the capitalist system that gave birth to them both. But how do we do that? How do we change this wretched system there's only one way. Just like that chant that we enjoy so much, there is only one solution. Intifada 
revolution. We must have revolution so we can have a socialist reconstruction of the United States of America. And I ask you, what kind of system do we live in where an institution can call the police on you for opposing genocide, but there's no authority that you can call on an institution that supports genocide? That's the backwardness and hypocrisy of the capitalist system. So my friends, we are not fooled this evening. We are not deterred from the insults and the attacks from the different school administrations, from the racists, from the Zionists, from the President of the United States himself. We are not deterred. We will stay in the streets. We will stay in the fight. We will not be cowed. We will stay in the struggle. We will strengthen our solidarity. We will build the movement. And we will keep on and fight on and march on and chant on until Palestine is free. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. It is not something that comes out of Judaism. It is not. It is a political ideology. So I understand that folks are confused and they believe what they want and they have their biases and, and, and they just hate Arabs and, they, and really they just want to kill all the Arabs. That's really what it is behind all of this ridiculous rhetoric about oh you're anti-semitic you want to kill all the jews from the river to the sea means the genocide of jews no it doesn't and they know it doesn't what they are attempting to do is to silence you with fear they got the cops out here ready to arrest some college students y'all do pay tuition right <laughs> I mean, they got the cops out here, y'all administration that y'all pay their salaries for. They in there calling the cops on y'all. And I don't think they're really thinking about how that's going to play out for their career later on, but that's a discussion y'all need to have amongst yourselves as students of this fine institution. What they want to do is not only silence your support for Palestine, they also want to silence your support and your understanding of the connections that the Palestinian struggle have to Haiti, to the Congo, to Mali, to Kinabaso, to Nicaragua, still fighting for their sovereignty, still fighting to take Cuba off of the test state test marker of terrorism. You understand me? You all are out here with way more knowledge of the world and how it really works than you could have ever paid for coming out of this institution. Period. And you are using it for the best reason in the world. For the liberation of your people. So, as a representative of the Black Alliance for Peace, I am not only glad that we were invited to participate in this solidarity action. I am honored. I am humbled. I do not know how you kids get up every day and do this, seeing what you've seen out of Gaza. I do not understand how you do it. But I know why you do it. Because it's the same reason our ancestors fought like they did for us. 
So this struggle, ladies and gentlemen, that you are embarking in, I bet you many of you think, and I'm going to leave you with this, I bet a lot of you are thinking, I've never done this before, I don't know how this is going to play out. Many of you are afraid, and I'm not going to tell you not to feel how you feel, but I will leave you with this. You are the example the world is following right now. Yeah. And I don't care what anybody else says about you, about your activism, your movement, your love for your people. We understand. We know. We know what this struggle is about. And we are thankful to be in struggle with you. Because we understand that if some of us are not free, not one of us is free. So I'm going to leave you with that. My beautiful people, let's, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, continue to keep fighting, keep fighting. Do not let them silence you. Don't let them scare you into submission. Keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. Keep on fighting, fight, fight, fight. Like your lives depends on it. they do. Yeah. Yeah. Peace be unto all of you. Many blessings unto all of you. Let's get free! Yeah. Zionists and their co-oppressors have always understood that students are the spark of every social justice movement and have attempted for decades to silence and threaten our students and faculty members who dare to resist their fascism, colonialism, and imperialism. Whether it is the anti-war movement, the civil rights movement, or the movement for Palestinian liberation, the oppressors only know how to act with violence, and their only response is ever violence. Netanyahu has the audacity to call this student uprising horrific. Yeah. What's horrific is the mass graves discovered with over 342 bodies that were mutilated beyond recognition. That's horrific. Children were buried with their hands behind their backs that's horrific! Yeah. Patients with catheters still inside of their bodies! That is horrific! Yeah. Over 40,000 murders is horrific! Over 2 million displaced is horrific! The 17 year siege is horrific! The 76 year Occupation of Palestine is horrific! But they use these words and play these games because they understand that this moment, this moment we are living in is a crucial one that will rock the foundation of this country. It is a moment that has destroyed any credibility of the propaganda that Zionists and the U.S. regime has peddled into these educational institutions for decades. Their institutions, their quote-unquote moral foundations are weak and they always have been. And it is very clear that their perceived power was always theater and now all of their cards are out. GW has been targeting Palestinians and pro-Palestinian students for years. They have thrown false accusations at SJP, continuously suppressed their right to organize. GW even shut down their trauma support center because they wanted to hold space for Pal they didn't want to hold space for Palestinians to grieve. Shame on GW. They refuse to accept that they will 
fail in their attempts to suppress this movement as long as we stay together, as long as we organize and stay united, as long as we stay disciplined and determined for our mission, and as long as we embody sumud or steadfastness and stand unwavering together. Every warning, threat, removal, dismissal, suspension, or arrest of any student across even one campus in this country ignites the flame and starts even ten more across this country. Because you cannot kill a movement! You cannot take away the power from the people! Today and every day, we will teach them that the power is held by the people. A people who are united, a people who have found strength amongst one another and not through their oppressive system. We will keep fighting until we get an end to all of our university's complicity in the Zionist settler colonial project, an immediate and permanent ceasefire, the end to the 17 year siege on Gaza, the end to the 76 year occupation of Palestine, and until we see liberation of all Palestinian prisoners and the reversal of all UNRWA funds. The success of this movement is guaranteed as long as we fight for it. Our collective liberation is guaranteed as long as we fight for it. We will see a liberated Palestine in this lifetime. We are here because our movement is winning. The more wins we achieve, the harder they will try to suppress us. It is them grasping for their power, and we will make sure that they never get a moment of peace. Not here. They will never see peace. Not here, not after their downfall, and not in their graves. Palestine will be free from the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. You know what? They're trying to silence you because they know you are effective. Because they know they're going against the force of history. They're trying to destroy you before you succeed to bring this imperialism to an end. Before we bring this poison of Zionism to an end. Because they're worried that Palestine, free Palestine is a slogan today. It will be a reality tomorrow. With a generation like you, it will be the reality that we will live. They've been committing a genocide for almost seven months now in Gaza. They haven't broken the will of the people of Gaza. And definitely, they cannot break our will here. Now we know what America stands for. We know what these elite colleges stand for. They are only structures in an imperial project. Israel is only another structure in an imperial project. Zionism is no less evil than white supremacy or any sort of supremacy. But they don't want you to say these facts. They don't want to hear them because they know they cannot engage you on the merits of your argument. If these colleges, if these administrations want to learn anything from you, they have to come and learn moral courage from you. If they want to know what morality is, they have to come and join you here. We elected a president who promised us to restore America's moral authority. Do you see more any moral authority? 
We have a president who continues to justify genocide in Gaza under the slogan of moral clarity. You know, Biden, Biden, if you want to learn what moral clarity is, you should be here. They can intimidate, they can threaten, but they will be defeated. Your generation doesn't understand what political correctness is. The only correctness is, is to stand with the human dignity. The only correctness is, is to stand for what is just, for what is right, with the oppressed, regardless of their background. But their definition of political correctness is to kiss the ring of Netanyahu, to kiss the ring of Trump in the case of Mike Johnson, to kiss the ring of Zionism here in America, imperialism. But your generation now is threatening, threatening all of that because you're injecting a new definition of morality, of courage. They're threatening you now and they're presenting you with a, with a, a hard choice. Either your professional and educational future or you stand with your morality. And you're teaching them a lesson back that we will stand with our morality and we will maintain our future in terms of our professionalism and in terms of how we're going to change this country forever. They're lying to us. They're lying to us about American exceptionalism. Now the First Amendment defines us. Freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, but when the people come and express their minds, when the people come and congregate to stand against injustices, suddenly our police is being weaponized. Suddenly our colleges are being militarized. But we will defeat them as they were defeated in the 1960s and in the 1970s. They tried to quash, they tried to quash and to quell the student movement, the anti-war movement against Vietnam. Lyndon Johnson went down in history in the Hall of Shame. Richard Nixon went down in history in the Hall of Shame. The anti-war movement now is the Hall of Fame. And Biden is also going down in the Hall of Shame. The administration of this university and administrations of colleges across the country will be in the Hall of Shame but we all will be in the Hall of Fame. And Palestine will definitely be free. Zionism will be a dark moment in our history. Any sort of supremacy will be a dark moment in our history. It is you, it is you. It's your generation that will bring this to an end. It is you that will bring this disgrace to an end. I want to call on our brothers and sisters from the Jewish community. Are you here with us? Are you here with us? How many of you are here? I've seen so many. I've seen so many. Do you feel threatened here? Do you feel? Do you fear for your safety? Do you think that we're anti-Semitic here? Are you self-hating Jews? You're not. You're standing with your morality. You just need these as human beings. You don't need to be a Palestinian or Arab or a Muslim to stand with justice and to stand with the Palestinians. Have this been done to our Jewish brothers and sisters, we all would be here with you. But Netanyahu doesn't speak for you. Israel does not speak for you. And this administration and the corrupt structure and the establishment in this country does not speak for us. They don't. I'm, I'm Palestinian. I'm an Arab. I'm a Muslim. None of the Palestine, or none of the Arab and Muslim states speak for me. I speak for myself. We, the people, speak for ourselves. When they do wrong, they don't represent us. And we do, when they do wrong, we fight them back. For our police, stop using your batons and weapons that we fund, we buy for you against your own people.
Don't become another Israeli army. Don't hurt your people. Your allegiance is to your constitution. Your allegiance is to the freedom of your people. Your allegiance is to protect us, not to attack us. These colleges are no longer the elitist colleges. They're no longer. The only thing that makes them elitist colleges is you, not them. You are giving them that honor. Without you, they're worth nothing. And we will take back these colleges as we will take back America, as we will take back Palestine, as we will take back our humanity, as we will free ourselves from oppression. No one is going to intimidate us. No one is going to silence us. They want to revive McCarthyism in America. We will defeat you. We don't give a damn about how you weaponize the law here against us because you will be the past. We are the future. Assalamu alaikum. Powerful people in this country, he went there and he added fuel to the fire. He did not go as a peacemaker. He went there as a stooge of the state of Israel. Mike Johnson, House Speaker at Columbia University. Our Jewish community is us. Our Jewish community is part of us. The majority of people of the Jewish community are against this genocide. Stop, stop conflating, stop conflating our efforts to stop the genocide with the Jewish community that we love and honor and we protect. So let them not succeed in playing this game anymore. The end is coming for this Zionist regime and we are seeking our liberation only. We are not seeking the destruction of any other people. We are here for freedom like the same students who led the movement on American campuses to end apartheid by forcing our universities to divest and disclose all their contracts with pro-Israel organizations. And the, the GW University leaders are obligated ethically, morally, and legally to disclose their connection with the state of Israel and end any cooperation with this killing machine in our name. As, as I conclude, we love you all. We love you all. Keep posting, keep talking, keep demonstrating, keep the pressure and the movement will succeed and Palestine will be free, inshallah, God willing, in our lifetime. Thank you. Who keeps us safe? Who keeps us safe? We as community showed up for them and so I have an ask for all of you. I need everyone to shift a little bit. We are going to surround this area and we're going to go around the encampment site.
just past 8 p.m. here in Washington. The universe had told them to end this encampment by 7 p.m. one hour ago. Of course, the fear was the police would come in and break it up, as they've now done three universities in the last week. University of Southern California, University of Texas at Austin, Columbia University in New York City. So far, the protest continues. The police have not showed up yet, maybe under the cover of darkness. It's getting close to 8.30. There's still light. The protest continues. Hundreds of people have come to support the encampment. 